Okay, we're going to be discussing Laboratory 3 from uh, Physics Laboratory Manual by David H. Lord, uh, Lloyd, 4th edition. Um, laboratory 3 discusses using the vector table where you, um, you place a particular uh, mass at one angle and then you place a, another mass at another angle. Uh, and then you, you experimentally find the resultant, the resultant would be here, but what you do is you find the equilibrium that balances out all of these forces that you're uh, putting together. And, and I have a video of that. Uh, I'll put a link to that video of doing it experimentally, uh, but we're gonna be talking about doing the graphical method and the analytical method. And we're gonna, in addition to the analytical by hand, we're gonna show I'm going to show how to do it using Excel, so it might be of interest uh, to others, not just to uh, to my uh, my physics class. So let's share the screen, and uh, here it is. So I'm going to dismiss the uh, my image. There's no reason for you to see me. Um, I want you to see the screen. So we're doing vector addition uh, example, the graphical method now. It, uh, in the, the experimental method, I had uh, uh, 200 grams, 0.2 kilograms at 30 degrees and 0.2 kilograms at uh, 120 degrees. So uh, experimentally, we found the equivalent to be 285 grams at 257 degrees, which that translates to a resultant if we uh, multiply 0 0.285 kilograms by 9.8, we get 2.79 newtons at 180 from 257 gives 77 degrees. Now we're going to do that. So, so those are our results. We're going to do it graphically. Um, so we have uh, 1.96 newtons. I just picked an arbitrary scale. Uh, I, I tried to make it big enough so that you know, if you make it real small, you, you'll end up with real accurate inaccurate results. So 1.96 Newtons at 30 and 1.96 Newtons at 120. Uh, we can translate this uh, this one over to here and use a head to tail method to uh, get the resultant. And we, if, if we draw the resultant, I measured it uh, to be 2.74 Newtons. Um, well, the 2.74 Newtons divided by 9.8 meters per second squares, uh, squared gives the 0 0.28 uh, kilograms or 280 grams. So experimentally, I got 285 uh, grams at 77 degrees. Uh, graphically, I got 280 grams at 75 degrees. And... Um, so that's how you do the graphical method. Now we're going to do the analytical method. Uh, I have my my 200 uh, grams, which is 1.96 newtons in this direction, uh, and then 1.96 newtons in in this direction at 120. And we we want to analytically find the resultant. So. Uh, to get the X value of F1, it's 1.96 times cosine of 30 degrees uh, is 1.697 Newtons. Uh, F1Y is, is using the sign. Uh, you get 0 0.98 Newtons. F2, um, I got minus 0 0.98 Newtons for the X. You can see it's a small vector over here. And um, for the Y, it's 1.697 Newtons. Now, to get the resultant, you have to add the components. So the RX components, F1X plus F2X is 1.697 Newtons plus a minus 0 0.98 Newtons. And you get a 0 0.717. Notice it's in the positive direction. And indeed, you can see a, a uh, one, one point. Uh, or 0 0.717 is a little vector in this direction. That's the X component. The Y component is 2.677. Uh, That's up here uh, along the Y axis. So we just did 
uh, we sum the components to come up with Rx and Ry. Now to get the magnitude, you take the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So 0 0.717 Newton squared plus 2.677 Newton squared. Take the square root of the, get, the square root of that, you get 2.772 Newtons. Uh, and to get the angle, it's the inverse tangent of Ry over Rx or uh, the inverse tangent of 2.677 newtons divided by 0 0.717 newtons, and you, you get 75 degrees. Um, now, what is that? I've got 2.772 newtons. What is that in grams? It's uh, 2.772 newtons divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. That gives me 0 0.283 kilograms or 283 grams. And we can see I got 283 grams. Analytically, I got uh, 280 grams graphically, and I got 285 grams uh, experimentally. So we, you can see there's a bit of error, and that's part of what this, uh, this exercise was supposed to show you. The analytical method is by far the most accurate. Uh, the, the graphical and the the uh, experimental, they're not as accurate, but they get you in the ballpark. Certainly 285 and 280 is very close to uh, 283 grams. Now, let's do the same thing using XL. I have F1, F2. This is the mass. This is the angle. This is the force. Just the uh, 9.8 times this, 9.8 times this gives you the, the force. Now, let's break it into its components. Now, let's look at A to get to calculate, I'm just going to do the X component. To calculate the X component, uh, you can see the, the equation at A. You basically, you take the force cell, which is D3, times the cosine of the angle, divided by 180 times pi. The 180 times pi is necessary to get it from radians to degrees. Uh, so it's the this particular cell, A, uh, I have a formula that says equals D3 times cosine uh, C3 divided by 180 times uh, pi. Now, you have to have the parentheses around the pi in order to get it correct. And you get 1.697 newtons. Now, uh, you, now you do the same for each of these. I'm not going to go through each one. I'm just giving you an example. Now, for B, you want to sum the components. Now, it's just as easy to say uh, E3 plus uh e4 but if you have multiple vectors you'll end up with a long equation so it's easier just to say uh the the sum of the components is equal to sum e3 colon e4 um and if you have multiple then it's just uh e3 let's say we had like four and, and it goes down here to, to to e6 you would say sum e3 colon e6 and you would get the sum uh, but in this case, it's just these two, so it's E3, E4. Now, to calculate the magnitude of the resultant, it's just the square root of the sum of the squares. Um, we do that here in C, so it's the square root of E5 squared plus F5 squared, and you come up with the 2.772. And uh, to calculate the angle, I use A tan 2 as opposed to A tan, because if it, you just use A tan and the quotient, you don't know what quadrant you're in, but ATAN2 preserves the quadrant and will put it in the right, uh, uh, the right direction. Now, in our case, we're in the first quadrant anyway, so it really doesn't matter, but uh, I'll, I'll explain a little bit later how it makes a difference. So you take ATAN2 of uh, E5 comma F5, the X component and the Y com component, divided by pi times 180, we'll give it to you in degrees, as opposed to radians. If you don't include this, you'll get the answer in radians. Now let's uh, put some notes. Make sure that there's an equal sign before each formula, the way I have, just the way I have it uh, printed here. Multiply by pi over 180 to convert from degrees to radians. 30 degrees times pi over 180 is equal to pi over six, which is equal to 0 0.524 radians. Now the opposite, multiply by 180 over pi to convert from radians to degrees. 1.047 radians times 180 over pi is uh, 188 over 
3.14 gives you 60 degrees. Okay, now here's, here's a little demonstration of the different, uh, if, if, let's just say I have an X component of three and four, then I've changed it up minus three and four, minus three and minus four and three and minus four. Those are all the possibilities uh, where we could combine uh, three and four positive and negative. And let's, let's see what we get. If, if we just use the A tan, you see it gets 53 minus 53, 53 and minus 53, because A tan doesn't know what quadrant you're in. However, if we use the A tan two, and notice here the A tan, it just requires the quotient Y over X, Y divided by X. But A tan two, you put the X component, comma Y component. And so it knows, it knows uh, what quadrant you're in. Look at the difference here, uh, 53, uh, 127 degrees, minus 127 degrees, and minus 53 degrees. It's important to understand the difference between A tan and A tan 2. A tan doesn't know which component is positive or negative, so it will only return a value between 90 and minus 90, or pi over 2 to minus pi over 2. So if this were the correct answer for minus 3 and, and 4, if you just use A tan, you're going to get minus 53 degrees, and that's wrong. Whereas if you use A tan 2, you'll see that you get uh, 127 degrees. Okay. Uh, and oh, there is a point where the analytical uh, method breaks down, and that's where you have, uh, let's say you were to have a, a, a 200 grams at 20 and 200 grams at minus 20. Um, well, if you look at the, the uh, tangent, you, there's, a, there's a, a point here, right at nine, minus 90 and right at 90 where it blows up. You can't, because basically you're dividing by zero. Um, so so the, uh, notice that at minus 90 and 90, the tangent theta is undefined, as indicated by the red lines. Uh, so you see, here's 200, 200 grams at minus 40, at, at 45, and 200 grams at uh, 135. Since we can't use tangent uh, y over x because x is zero, try using another trig function. You could use the uh, cosine theta is equal to x over the hypotenuse, or you can use sine theta is equal to y over the hypotenuse, where h, h is the hypotenuse, uh, x is equal to zero, and y equals h. Uh, cosine of zero uh, over 230, uh, uh, I have it 238, it should be 283, uh, that's equal to 90. Sine inverse of uh, basically one, uh, again, I have an error, it's two, it should be 283 and 283, that's equal to 90 degrees. Um, and you can see I've done that arc cosine, uh, here I have it right, 283, here I have it wrong. Anyway, but in both cases, it's, uh, I have them multiplied by 180 divided by pi and they got 90 and 90. And that's it for, for these discussions. I just wanted to make you aware of, of how to use Excel, uh, for, for, uh, doing these calculations and it may help others just knowing how to do some of these trig functions and how to stay away from, from radians. If you, if you need radians, go ahead and use it. You don't have to use the, the conversions that I've shown you. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, that's it. And we'll end this discussion.